Hello and welcome everyone. Today is Thursday, December 8th. Uh, it's our Thursday community call. Today we're overall going to be going into a bit of a year-end review. Um, I always forget if it's, a, yeah, I guess year-end and year-in review are both grammatically correct. Right? I always forget which one's the more popular one of the two, but that's neither here nor there. We'll get into the year-in and whatever review, uh, talk about some of the highlights from the year, and uh, we'll uh, if we have time at the end, we'll uh, stop on the question for the audience. And obviously, we're we're going to try to keep this as much as discussion based throughout. Um, but especially at the end, we'll ask people to think about kind of what are the topics, activities, areas of interest that you think uh, we as an organization should be keeping top of mind going into 2023 to maximize the both the amount of momentum we can carry into the new year as well as to make sure that we're focusing our energy and attention in the areas of greatest potential impact in the space. Um, but before we delve into all of that fun discussion, uh, let's just take a moment to plug any uh, community activities or what else is going on within SCRF so folks know about it. Uh, I know next week's community call, we will have Lucas Newsy, uh, who puts together the research pulse. We'll have him hopping on to give us a walkthrough of FTX and do a bit of a recap. Um, for those who saw sort of some of the information about how uh, Alameda and FTX had the initial connection and you know where are the where are the FTT tokens going, uh, that was actually uh, Lucas's post, I believe was one of, if not the earliest um, finder of some of those uh, connections. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we're really excited. Uh, I know he's been kind of heads down dealing with a lot of the analysis around this since it happened. So uh, he seemed pretty excited to kind of get to do a bit of a retrospective on the last month or so that it will be by that point. Uh, so yeah, really excited for that community call. And that will be the last one for the calendar year of 2022. Uh, so then the, the next community call um, as of right now, at least, is scheduled on, so next week we have Lucas, next week is December 15th, then we are off for a couple of weeks, and then on January 12th, Thursday, January 12th, we will have some of the 3327 researchers jumping in uh, to talk about a new piece of uh, ZKP, zero knowledge proof related research that they're working on. Uh, and we're gonna work on inviting a bunch of ZK researchers to that call. So we're hoping that one will be sort of a slightly different flavor of a more research feedback discussion. Uh, and, and yeah, we'll try to make sure that there is an appropriate concentration of folks with that interest there. Um, so yeah, really excited to, to try all that out in the new year. Uh, I'll stop there on my end. I don't know who else has any other announcements for the community, anything else you wanna plug with the wider SCRF community? Yeah, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, we have the Source Cred Guild, and that is open for anybody to attend and to participate in. And uh, yeah, if you'd like some more details on that, feel free to message me. Um, Great, thank you, Brian. Anyone else with any updates for the community? Yeah, Vaughn, please. Just a reminder <clears throat> to check out the latest episode of our podcast, and especially if you're part of the cohort. Uh, it is a discussion with Jeff Emmett and Michael Zarkham on computer-aided governance, and I will drop the links in the chat. Thank you for plugging that, Ivanya, and a quick shameless plug on that side. So especially if anyone is interested at the intersection, uh, or I don't know why I said shameless as if I'm plugging myself, but if anyone is interested at the intersection of uh, data analytics, of getting actual hands-on with analysis, modeling, simulation, and governance, uh, which for a lot of folks feels like those come from very different worlds where uh, governance is more uh, you know, fluffy culture, uh, you know, rules, things around like uh, how you interact with a group of people and less about, you know, concrete engineering principles. Uh, and so uh, the block science team and building out their CAD CAD uh, with, I believe, CAD CAD being computer aided design. So they built this new CAD CAD tool uh, to actually help model and simulate governance ecosystems and interaction. So, um, yeah, whether you just find a playing around with such stuff cool, uh, or this is just something of particular interest for you, uh, definitely strongly encourage folks to go check out uh, the CAD CAD tool and some of the other uh, learnings from uh, Block Science. And I'll drop the overall CAD CAD link here in a moment. Um, 
but yeah, anyone have any other announcements, any other meetings or anything taking place or just general announcements for our community? All righty, sounds like not at the moment. If anyone else uh, remembers anything, please feel free to drop it in chat. Uh, and just keep an eye on the Discord. Uh, I guess a, a last overall thing, just as we approach the holidays. So technically, uh, the last two weeks of December uh, will be off at SCR, so it, it will definitely be much quieter. Uh, I don't think it will be, or you know, the intention is not to be completely uh, a ghost town for those two weeks. There will still be a few folks around. Uh, from the SCRF team, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, massively um, lowered in terms of uh, just dedicated resources. Uh, also, you know, between uh, just uh, the the nature of the market right now, but also it's end of year. It's been a crazy back half of the year. I mean, I feel like the whole year has been hectic in its own right, uh, and especially these last few months have been uh, very tumultuous. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling uh, the general impacts of the roller coaster. Uh, and the whiplash from it of, of both this year and uh, and uh, I guess just the last couple of years in general. So I really hope folks do actually take some time as much as they're able to to relax and unwind a bit over the holidays and focus on self-care and others and others you might not uh, get a chance to spend time with during the year all the time. So uh, yeah, just uh, I'm very appreciative of all the folks who have kind of stuck it through with us and have either hopped in or joined the community or have been here well before the year started. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give that quick little uh, point of thanks today as well. All right, so I guess let's go ahead and jump into the community and review. So let me just pull up. I wonder when these tools are actually gonna add like a queuing function so that, because every time someone knows they're gonna present, they still don't wanna put it up there until they do. So to like have it ready to go, whatever. Um, that is neither here nor there. And I don't need to waste your time on that one. All right, cool. So today we shall be uh, doing our year end review. Uh, and we'll just talk about a couple of general highlights, forum highlights, and some questions looking towards the future. Uh, but really, we, we would love to hear feedback as we're going through this. Are there any other things that you feel like you were really excited about that you're not hearing uh, in, this, in these few slides? Uh, you know, uh, Tuan, Paul, Maria, and myself just kind of quickly slap this together over the last day or so, uh, just so that we can share something and start off the conversation. This is by no means a, we comb through every little granular activity we've done in the last 12 months and are somehow assessing it or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we definitely might've missed a project uh, or an activity here or there. Uh, so please do feel free to shout it out at any point if you see anything that you personally got really excited about that, that we're not capturing. But I'll, I'll get us started with some of the events. And again, these are not necessarily a concrete order. So if you do also just have feedback, uh, especially for this slide and the next one, uh, we use modified versions of these in our new fundraising deck as that's now, now a thing we're doing. Um, so yeah, if you do actually have feedback on these two sides specifically, please do let us know as that will impact how we're positioning the fundraising and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll just kick off with some of the event related stuff. Uh, on that side, I, if I remember correctly, the first official event-related thing that Scurf got involved in was SmartCon 2021, right? We're in 22, yeah, uh, in 2021. Um, and so that was, I think, August last year, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and that was really, yeah, the first uh, place that we got involved. And they asked us to, to do five different panels uh, where we did one on identity, two on governance, one on one or two on privacy? I don't remember. But we had a bunch of great conversations there. Um, and yeah, I think oh, that'll be on the next slide with folks like Ariel Gabazon and some others. We, we really got to collaborate with a variety of great folks there. Um, so yeah, this year, East Denver was the first. Uh, th that was sort of the first place where we also actually put in some sponsorship dollars. Oh, the bull market. Um, and we actually got to, you know, directly support them. And we were a sponsor of ETH Denver uh, overall. We also got to support some of the side events at ETH Denver. So DSI at ETH Denver, uh, which I guess technically gets the claim of being the first official DSI branded thing this year. 
Um, there were things already at a variety of events at the end of last year, uh, and blockchain and science was 1718. Um, but yeah, I guess that that is a fun thing that we get to have been part of is that the first official like ESI is now a thing and we're here and we're planning events. Uh, this was one of the earliest or some consider it the earliest on that side, which is fun. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't if folks want to. Sorry, I'm just also getting excited about these thinking back on them. So uh, I'm going to go a little higher level. If you want me to zoom in to any of these events, please let me know. Uh, Dallas, Mexico, we actually just supported remotely, just like we did with um, the, I think it was called the Learning Assemblage. Uh, but the thing that uh, the Token Engineering Academy and the Governance put together last December, uh, and with Dallas, Mexico, those are just two events that we got to support on that side. Uh, GGG was the Global Governance Gathering in uh, as part of Def Connect Week in Amsterdam, where we ran an Open Problems in Dow Science uh, workshop, and we got to do DSI Day. Uh, we were the lead sponsor of DSI Day the next day. Uh, while we couldn't directly collaborate on DSI Berlin, which happened about a month later, we were able to sponsor it at that point. Um, and then we had the Web3 workshop with Quinn DuPont over the summer, which was one that we actually both helped uh, a bit with the actual operations and organization, but again, we're the lead sponsor of. Uh, and then under the new reality of not being able to sponsor or directly fund conferences anymore, which started in, in this last quarter, uh, we had the Stanford DAO workshop that we coordinated on with MetaGov and DAO Research Collective. So that one was really led by DAO Research Collective. They, they really did the heavy lifting on that one. Uh, but nonetheless, our three orgs kind of came together on that one. And same for the Open Problems in DAO Science workshop at DevCon, uh, where initially we were the ones leading with the planning, uh, but especially with, uh, with just my, uh, my steps that came up where I couldn't travel. Uh, uh, we were fortunate that Josh was able to, to jump in on that one and just run the open problems in Dow Science there, uh, and that Renee was able to hop in and help lead a lot of the DSI activities and some of the workshops, excuse me, with funding the protocol, oh, funding the commons, not funding the protocols, funding the commons by uh, protocol labs. Um, but yeah, those are some of the exciting events throughout this year. Uh, and obviously for next year, our relationship with events is going to be a little different. We are obviously not in a position to financially come in and put them on. Um, there already have been a couple of asks, and one of them was particularly for some quirky Twitter related, like bring down Twitter thing, which I was like, this sounds fun, but we cannot grant anything, nor I'm sure we would, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, at this point, we are very much trying to figure out how do we partner with and collaborate the highest quality events that are going to be taking place next year? And what does it mean for SCURF to collaborate with events? And I think for next year, a big thing that I would love to see us get to explore uh, and discuss in more detail is how do we actually provide a long tail of discussion after live events, right? Because a lot of the, there's a common complaint of conferences are great, there's all this content, you show up at the conference, everyone is too burnt out from other conferences to go pay attention to any of the talks. Everyone's just hanging out in the common area. So it's just like, what, what is actually meant to be happening there and how do we transfer that knowledge, especially for those who are not free at that point in time, or given a lot of these are in person, couldn't travel uh, given that these are all over the world and you need a full-time budget and job just dedicated to this to attend even a fraction of all of the conferences, uh, which is pretty nuts and I don't understand how people survive that. But yeah, as folks actually have thoughts around, say for funding the commons and shelling point, those are two specific events that are open to collaborating with us. And if we can propose to them a, hey, this is how we collaborate with you before, during, and after the conference to use SCURF as this kind of long tail for discussion around live events. I think that can both be a big value add to the space, a value add to SCURF, and would I also get these conferences excited because that is a pain point for them. So. I guess at this point, as folks have any thoughts, questions, feel free to just jump in with your virtual hand, drop in anything in chat. Uh, we'll also take pauses here and there as well. I don't know if anyone else wanted to jump in with any other thoughts on uh, events or any other events that were in capture there before moving on to the next thing. Cool. So on the curated research side, you know, uh, hopefully everyone has had a chance to take a look at Research Pulse. Uh, it has been around for a minute. Uh, we started it in February of last year in 2021. So going strong for over a year now. 
in case you are not subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe and check it out as it's now a Substack based newsletter. Um, and I don't know, Maria or Michael, or if anyone else wants to comment anything else about the newsletter uh, before uh, jumping to the learning cohorts. I guess real quick, just to note that in addition to launching it, I want to say end of September, it's been steadily growing, which is incredible to see. We pretty much get one to two signups a day um, for the past couple of months. So really amazing. And I think it's exciting to think about where the research pulse can go and grow beyond just well, not just, but beyond covering the amazing research that's coming out on a weekly basis, thinking about adding events that are going on in the space, covering people's projects, maybe job postings, definitely on the radar and stuff that we're thinking about for the future and for 2023. Would love to, yeah, kind of hear from folks what they like about it, what they want to see um, covered would be really awesome. That's all yeah. for now. Just to add to that, Maria, I mean, we soft launched at the beginning of September and we already have 151 subscribers. So I feel like, you know, for an organic effort, that's been really fantastic. And our, our subscriber base is going up month over month. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And to Maria's point, I think we've got room for growth um, in terms of what it covers. Um, obviously, right now it's focused on the research pulse, but um, love to hear people's feedback on that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll also just add that I'm trying to, and I think in general for outreach at SCURF, we uh, need to make sure that it is actively getting plugged in just about every single conversation that we are having. So I'm noticing when not just mentioning it, but dropping that link in chat while the meeting is happening has led to, oh, the meeting ended, and I already see one of the people in that meeting has signed up for research calls. Uh, which is also a cool conversion because they're also a lot of the time uh, very much in our target audience too. So that's super exciting. But yeah, I'll pause here for a moment in case anyone does have any general thoughts or feedback with uh, with what Michael and Maria mentioned in terms of other, yeah, just ways to kind of supplement the great base that we already have there and the activities that we've built out. What, one thing I wanted to quickly mention was the introduction of an announcements funnel. It's somewhat in an internal process, but ultimately I think that it will help surface these types of highlighted content pieces that we can make sure that they get added to our various highlighted places, such as pot potentially on Scurf.io, on top of the forum banner inside of our chat, not official notification channel. So there's a lot of different places that we can um, use to amplify uh, visibility of these links and these endpoints that we have to share with everybody. For sure. And yeah, if anyone else does have any other thoughts or feedback, again, please feel free to drop those in chat or to reach out to um, Maria or Michael on that one. Uh, but just to be respectful of time and try to get through the various updates, let's jump over to the, the learning cohorts. Yeah, I was really excited to, I guess we initially got connected to Grant and Captive via CityDAO, uh, which is just only worth mentioning that in the sense of like that, that's what we thought was gonna be the first cohort. Uh, and so hopefully that will come at some point next year. Uh, but Paul, if you're cool with it, I will pass it off to you to talk about the writing cohort. Yeah, so this has been, I mean, it's both a learning cohort and also in some ways a webish three-ish experiment, even though it's not you know entirely web three. Uh, but we are now in the middle of our second uh, writing cohort where we are trying to um, experiment with like, how do we direct people to provide content in a on like a specific category? Uh, can we kind of achieve high quality discourse by kind of gathering up uh, people who share some interest and directing them towards uh, a specific outcome? So the current cohort is focused on the podcast, for example, and how can we extract more value from those podcast episodes and get more perspectives and um, maybe apply or brainstorm uh, in a long tail way, because uh, ultimately that is one of the things that the forum uh, allows for. Uh, so we're in the middle of that experiment. Before that, we basically just kind of had an open one of what is it like to kind of just do a writing cohort in a comment 
uh, style instead. So uh, I think that has been one of the interesting things about this experiment is many of the other writing cohorts that Taptive has done or kind of writing projects across uh, the ecosystem has been about producing your own content uh, from your own perspective. And one of the things that we're kind of experimenting with these cohorts is that these are comment-based cohorts. So uh, how can we help attract people who want to learn better to, uh, how to be involved in discussions and respond thoughtfully to other people's ideas. So um, that I think has been one of the coolest things to see in the learning cohort, the, these learning cohorts, these writing cohorts is um, getting people in discussion and conversation with ideas um, as opposed to just kind of like silos of ideas. Not that that's necessarily, it's like a bad thing, um, but I think in order to kind of move some of the research that we're interested in uh, forward or making it more applicable uh, as an ecosystem, it, benefits us to have people who can be kind of in discussion with ideas uh, as opposed to just kind of producing their ideas. So um, I think so far kind of an interesting experiment and some successes with the cohorts. And uh, I anticipate that we are going to continue to experiment with them in 2023 and see if we can't direct them or um, maybe even do some scaffolding of here's an entry level cohort uh, versus here's a advanced cohort and you know maybe with some of the other things uh, that we have on the go like badging which we should probably put in the web3 experiments um, but something like badging um, you know how can we help people get value out of their participation in this as well absolutely thank you Paul yeah it's really exciting to think about what will be uh, the versions of it will get to run in the new year whether partnering with other communities or, or any other potential uh additions or changes there so yeah uh, if anyone has thoughts or feedback yeah please maria question have we thought about using the cohort experimentation as part of the public goods student association project curious if those overall at all yeah so i think they will um I think, we, uh, yeah, I, the, the intention is for something like that to potentially plug in uh, mid to late in the semester. Uh, the general thinking is kind of like phase one is just map a bunch of clubs and start outreach and start planning activities, start planning like weekly seminars come January, get folks into those kind of seminars uh, and not just be, hey, come watch a presentation for an hour, but really try to limit it to no more than like five to 10 minutes of someone actively talking uh, at people and the rest of the time and like seeding some kind of idea for the remainder of the time as a discussion. And so to really provide students a hands-on place to talk about ideas, learn about them, ask questions and, and dive into them more. Um, but anyway, yeah, so build from that to running an ideation event. So you got exposed to a bunch of different problems and challenges. Now write written-based solutions around what some of the uh, potential uh, solutions can be. And it, this is where we'll have flexibility of, is it better to do potentially a writing cohort before the ideation event? Or is that like a digest of the ideation event effectively of then writing piece, or is that part of the idea, or right? Can we, can we potentially couple those two of the ideation event is actually part of the, like the outcome of the Taptive cohort. So we haven't thought those details through yet. Uh, and that's very much part of what uh, what I'm hoping, yeah, what we need to start kind of thinking about and, and clarifying into, into the new year. And we'll be able to be uh, to adjust it as we go to, so we can always layer in new changes later. Yeah, and I guess with the other part of the learning cohort bucket here, there's this the point on reading groups. Uh, and we did host a few internally. Uh, we had the Infinite Machine, we had Impact Networks, and yeah, we, we had David uh, Ehrlichman from Impact Networks come out from one of these community calls, which was fun. Um, and also, uh, just to Maria, to go back to your point on, on TAPTIV uh, and the public and student group. So there, those will also be kind of a quasi reading group uh, style as well. So to try to get folks focused on reading something together and, and going through it. Uh, and yeah, thinking again, how does that fit into a writing cohort? Or right, maybe we'll, we should talk to, yeah, be, this is a good point. We should talk to Grant uh, and brainstorm with him as well. Right, maybe we create some adjusted version of the writing cohort uh, to kind of fit, uh, fit in with some of these, so yeah. Absolutely. 
So I guess jumping to the next bucket uh, with funded research, this was obviously in the earlier part of the year uh, when, uh, yeah, when there were just less uh, budget constraints, but we got to, to fund a variety of uh, organizations and initiatives. Uh, and yeah, most of this was concentrated in and around governance, just given that's where we also felt most comfortable uh, judge or not judging, right? But you have to assess a grant when you get it in. And those are the most attainable for us to assess with existing network. Uh, and with the initially the intention was slowly expanding from governance to offering these kind of grants around cryptography and, and auditing or, or other spaces. Uh, but obviously with the market change, we've had to pause direct granting. So we'll see what kind of updates come in the new year on this side. But at the very least, it's been great getting these folks to come in and uh, interact with the forum. Uh, and yeah, we'll see and follow up with them to see what kind of community events we could do in the new year. I know, uh, yeah, already thinking about how, how to add some potential community call updates and things like that uh, next year. With media and promo, um, yeah, I mean, as it's mentioned here, right, with the podcast, with our YouTube, I know we've had our YouTube up for a while, but this was the year where we actually started kind of uh, seriously using it in some kind of way with releasing uh, the podcast uh, at pretty much uh, at, towards the beginning of the year. Um, and yeah, we've been able to kind of feature some events uh, and videos from live events, as well as our community calls and any of the kind of calls that we host, so guild calls, uh, et cetera. So um, I don't know if uh, Maria, Michael, Yvonne, if anyone else wants to jump in and add any more color on media and promo in any kind of way. I just wanted to add real quick. Can you hear me? Yep. OK, cool. I just wanted to add real quick that <clears throat> so as of next week, when we actually finish uh, with publishing all the uh, podcast episodes, we will have 19 episodes total in both seasons, <clears throat> which I think is a really great success. Um, but what really kind of uh, amazes me is the fact that <clears throat> all of these all of the guests this week that that we had had on the podcast were very excited to take part in it um and another thing that i would like to kind of emphasize is just i want to say thank you to paul and whoever spearheaded the podcast cohort uh because in my opinion that's sort of kind of a missing link that um, <clears throat> bridges the gap between the podcast and the forum and kind of helps uh, promote that uh, the conversation around the, the podcast. Yeah, thank you for, for calling that out, Ivanya. And thank you, uh, Paul, for, for making that link with the second writing cohort, right? Because we're already on our second one. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that, that was a great one. And yeah, I saw Maria sent through some potential graphics for the SBT that we'll, we'll work on uh, there as well. So excited to, to share those with the internal team once those are, uh, are, are progressing and yeah, get those out hopefully before the end of the year. Um, but yeah, Maria uh, or anyone else, do you want to jump in with media and promo stuff before jumping into experimentation? I think there are some slides later on that visualize some of this a bit better so yeah. i'm happy to jump in with those sounds like a plan to me cool thank you uh and then yeah so to wrap up on this slide then let's get into some of the experiments uh that we were running um i guess just realized is this technically in reverse order of when we uh, of when we start no when we started doing these i think the comment of the year was at the very beginning and yeah contributor rewards and then i'm forgetting when we kicked off source credit exactly but uh paul I'll, uh, I'll pass it off to you in case you want to jump in and brian if you want to add anything to source cred after yeah there's some there's some more source cred stuff that i would like to discuss also a little bit later uh, when it comes to some of the growth stuff on the forum. Um, but one of the things that kind of doesn't fit in with that part is uh, just the idea of guild. So source cred, I think so far has been um, our best because it's the oldest guild. Um, but this idea of staying connected to the community. So even though SCURF itself is not a DAO, having some DAO-ish types of structures like a guild uh, that is responsible for maintaining source cred and uh, evaluating models. I mean, that's why, you know, we always push the, the source cred meeting 
in calls like this because it's open to our community to have um, some influence on what is this piece of software doing um, and how is it evaluating or weighting uh, the types of contributions people make and can we use this piece of software to encourage the type of things that we'd like so just in and of itself the guild i think has been a pretty cool thing that scurf has built and is building um during this year and yeah that did show up in june i think is when that finally got launched so yeah comment of the month and contributor rewards um that was before that uh, also kind of a connection to the community you know just doing some voting not necessarily web3 but the thing like i kind of alluded to that's maybe missing in the slide is we're starting to experiment with some badging and nfts and things like that um not too much but i do want to uh, call out renee for uh, especially on the onboarding side of kind of getting us to start experimenting with some um, tools that produce some badges, like the, there's the citizenship badge, uh, and there's a pretty solid thread on the forum right now uh, if you are interested in engaging in how that, what that badge means, or even how to get it. Um, so we're starting to experiment there, and that's something that I'm looking forward to much more in 2023. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, obviously, all of these projects uh, took a very large amount of people to, to get off the ground. Uh, so from everyone who who helped on the on the events, uh, I know, yeah, especially with research policy, you know, from uh, Lucas, who actually uh, does the initial curation uh, to Tuan and, and Tolu and Buki and anyone else who helped out in the process of uh, of doing the actual primary author outreach and uh, Maria, Michael uh, and the rest of the discovery team and Ralph. Uh, and actually getting the newsletter version out. Um, and yeah, with uh, I know with the podcast that started with Chris's idea initially, even before I got here, and then we started playing around with it a little, uh, and then it only really kind of took form uh, towards this year. And uh, yeah, we had uh, yeah, various times, uh, anywhere from three to 10 people helping out as the season actually went into to full uh, fully active mode. So yeah, just really appreciative of everyone who's been able to kind of leave uh, their impact throughout 2022 on some of these various projects we've been working on. Um, and focusing from more of then say the contributor and partner perspective of, of who else have we interacted with. Uh, granted, yeah, I realize now this one needs to also be adjusted as, um, well, this is a recorded public call. I shall not call that detail out here, but something here needs to be yeah, sorry. But anyway, we were working with DSI, uh, the DSI community in a variety of different ways, a variety of different uh, projects started coming up, a lot of community building and, you know, trying to think of how do we actively build that community in the various research areas that we're involved in as well, from governance to, you know, we started pushing more on the security side, doing the public good student group now and a few other activities. Uh, you know, with universities, we had some direct interactions with uh, or a sort of virtual presentation from or supported a conference at or something like that with, with a variety of these institutions. Uh, and especially for next year with the, the list that we're putting together for the academic outreach for the Public Good Student Association, we're making sure that, that has a much more truly global uh, and representative breakdown of orgs because this was candidly based on just ease of existing connections. This was not a, a thought out or intentionally planned list of organizations as such. Uh, and as we are beginning to actually plan a formal and structured outreach program towards universities, uh, we definitely want to make sure that only one university here is abroad. Uh, so we definitely want to make sure that we appropriately skew uh, globally and not towards a single country. Um, you know, in terms of industry partners, we've had a chance to, uh, you know, either recognize the work from or feature on a podcast in early discussions or partake in some of the um, uh, conference events that we set up, uh, as well as find, you know, Protocol has actually come in and been our first uh, additional supporter in addition to Chainlink. Um, and yeah, it's just been great getting to uh, kind of collaborate with a variety of different organizations and really increasing uh, the volume of our interaction with industry, at least in terms of positioning the forum and trying to think how we can add value uh, is absolutely a priority going into the new year. So definitely excited to, to grow on that side as well, because a lot of these two have really just been, as mentioned, organic and, you know, just kind of uh, through existing or close connections. And so, uh, yeah, excited to uh, to get to now be at the point where we're able to execute on a larger outreach strategy. 
And you know, in terms of contributors on the forum, uh, obviously we had Sergey, who's our co-founder, uh, uh, come in early on and provide uh, some posts there. Uh, and we've had some other great uh, folks, both from industry and academia, jump in to contribute to the forum. Um, as well as, yeah, we were able to kind of facilitate a variety of interactions. And I realize we should add one more here uh, because next week we're facilitating uh, sort of the research itself is a uh, pre-publication. So we can't publicly share it yet until they actually publish the paper, but we're doing a small facilitated feedback session between some folks in industry and some folks in academia uh, for someone who's currently doing their PhD uh, in something DAO related. And so helping them kind of get both uh, exposure from other researchers and folks in industry there. Uh, and yeah, we've had a variety of conversations with journals uh, and still kind of exploring what our collaboration with actual formal publication venues could look like in the new year. Uh, I'll pause there for a moment in case anyone else wanted to mention any other kind of contributions and partners. Uh, obviously, you know, now we're starting to work more with a group like Taptive, as, as Paul was mentioning, around the writing cohort. Uh, but yeah, I'll pause there in case anyone has any others. So jumping ahead, because I feel like I've been unintentionally hogging the time. Um, Maria, do you want to jump in and talk about some of the exciting launches that we had this year? Sure. Uh, yeah, this is a cross group. This is by no means a discovery effort. It's a cross wide scurf collaboration. Um, I don't know how other folks on this call feel, but it's really exciting looking back at everything that's happened because so much has happened at scurf. And this is, I've only encapsulated five launches here and that's because I ran out of space. Um, so some of the big ones, please obviously jump in and let me know which ones I've missed. But GitHub was a huge collaborative cross scurf wide effort. Uh, so we did not have a project management project tracking tool before this year, really. And GitHub was a huge effort to um, encapsulate our projects, figure out what we're working on, have a place to collaborate with everyone on the team. So that is uh, sorry. That is the top left corner. Then <laughs> top right corner is scurf.io. Also huge. We had no website and then we now have a website, a landing page encapsulating what scurf has been up to. So that was a major project that took a lot of people's time and I think has um, resulted in a really awesome artifact that we continue to use and will continue to upgrade. And then there in the bottom right corner is the forum. I know we've had the forum, but it's been upgraded this year, Paul, you probably have a lot more context on this, but I wanted to at least capture the banner portion. And I know we've done some awesome stuff with tags. Um, the forum may look similar, but there's actually been a lot of updates and improvements throughout the year. So I think you could probably talk about that and the Discord, which is in the middle right there. And then finally, bottom left is the podcast, which we released this year. and both Eugene and Yvonne were mentioning, we've now had 19 episodes come out. So really, really incredible. And it's literally taken, I'm pretty sure every single person on this call and whoever will watch this call to bring these to life. So feeling very grateful around this. But yeah, Paul, if you wanted to jump in with some more context or anyone else really. Yeah, I can jump in in a moment, but I'm also very excited about, you know, the the banner and making, you know, one of the things that we've definitely been working on throughout the year, slowly and steadily, is that scurf things start to look more like scurf things and like one cohesive whole. So even on this very delightfully overwhelming slide, you'll notice that there's a lot of continuity. And I think in the year 2022, one of the things that scurf got better at is 
um, having scurf spaces look like scurf spaces, and I expect us to kind of continue with that. Um, I think on, it's like the next slide or close to the next slide. I'd happy to jump in with some more forum improvements, but it's as opposed to kind of visual or user, it's more like what we're doing with it. Also, Eugene, you have a fantastically pink window now. I like what you got going uh, on there. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I also just wanted to quickly say on this line before pushing over to the next one, uh, I just wanted to thank a bunch of people as well, because this took uh, the the force of many. And, you know, with GitHub, uh, Tuan and Brian uh, really led a lot of that push. And uh, Maria was uh, the first to kind of uh, show some examples of how to use some of that project management side and working with Paul and, and the rest of the core ops team uh, there. And obviously with Rich as well, um, you know, on uh, and really a lot of the rest of this was uh, very much thanks to Brian. Uh, obviously, other folks were helping out with the podcast, as mentioned, and big thanks to Matt, uh, who is our designer. Uh, for actually, yeah, making the beautiful aesthetics that we ended up using and helped us create that uh, visual connectivity be, uh, between all of our resources. Um, so yeah, that that has been great. Um, uh, yeah, any any other quick things on this side before we jump over? I guess maybe in interest of time uh, and just to make sure everyone gets to share theirs. Uh, we'll just keep going. If you do have any anything, just please drop in chat for now. Uh, but yeah, with the top five videos, uh, Maria, did you want to jump in on this one real quick? Sure, real quick. Just wanted to highlight that the top two videos are community calls, which is incredible. So um, incredible to see the views and the durations. Really, really awesome in terms of people both watching the content and staying to watch a lot of it and the next two being the podcast and in the top five and then the last one the source card guild so really really incredible to see all of these featured in our top videos and then i didn't have space <laughs> to do top 10 but i think out of the top 10 six of them were community calls so yeah, a bit meta, but we're in the community call. Appreciate I'm in the community call, appreciating the community call. And it's really incredible to see people interested and engaging with these. So that was the intention with this slide. Yeah, and thank you to our wonderful community and all the great guests who have joined us throughout the year uh, to have uh, gotten the wonderful conversation we've had throughout the year here. Uh, jumping to the next one with socials. Yeah, I know our socials has also grown tremendously throughout the year, uh, thanks to Maria and Michael. But yeah, Maria, please. Yeah, huge thank you to Michael. Um, as you could tell, I like pictures, so <laughs> overwhelming pictures. So um, I could have gone in so many different directions with this one, but just to highlight some amazing stats. So the top portion is our Twitter, and the bottom portion is the LinkedIn. and I want to say both have at least tripled or, or come close to tripling in users, which is amazing. And then the stats that are next to them are um, our either audience growth rates or engagement rates relative to industry benchmarks, industry being technology, that's the industry that we technically fall under um, for these particular metrics. And it's just amazing to see that Apparently audience growth is negative for the industry and we are positive, so that's incredible. Um, but the thing that is even more exciting out of this slide is the engagement rates on average. And I think this is kind of what I've seen. It's one point around 1.5%, maybe 2%, maybe 4% is like really high for an industry, but good. Ours are pretty incredible, like looking at 7.23% for Twitter and then 8.65% on LinkedIn. Really, really amazing. Um, awesome, awesome work. And yeah, I just wanna continue to figure out ways to ensure socials are engaging. And if you're not following us, please do, because we're really close to um, reaching a new milestone with the Twitter account and with the LinkedIn. So thank you. 
Awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I'd just like quickly follow up and say there are other metrics in other areas that uh, are also having a similar kind of up and to the right direction and momentum, which is really uh, cool to see in the face of the crypto winter that we are, are all in. And this is especially true in our chat space and uh, for Skirfio, for the forum, for Substack, pretty much all these endpoints we've been collecting analytics for for about half a year now. And yeah, they're pretty much all up and to the right. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. You know, really exciting to to definitely see all of that community. And in terms of the the forum highlights, you know, we definitely uh, saw some good overall data in terms of the the general amount of page views that we're getting. But you see, kind of over the over the end of the summer, a uh, pretty big jump coming up, which is ex always exciting to see those kind of a uh, step function increases, which is lovely. Um, and you know, getting to see on the left side, it's kind of overall topics per month coming in, uh, and then the middle one is posts, and the right one is DAU over MAU or daily average users divided by the monthly average users. Uh, and especially for this last one, uh, it, it was sort of indicating that 30 is generally a very good benchmark to shoot for, and we've steadily been kind of increasing and showing that the amount of people who consistently come here on a day-to-day -day basis relative to, you know, just checking in once a, occasionally as in once a month here or something less frequent um, or in that frequency range, excuse me, uh, is, is generally increasing, which is uh, great to see. Uh, and yeah, Paul, I guess anything you want to mention in terms of any other uh, forum stuff? Yeah, I just do also want to kind of jump in here like so that we have some great success. I think there's a variety of reasons. Um, there's some good conversations that are happening there. Uh, I think SourceCred has been a success when it comes to attracting people. Uh, I think like comment of the month, uh, our public, uh, the, the way that we are um, publicizing the good conversations, right? Like, so we are gaining some momentum here. Uh, from a moderation perspective, I think we now like a 2023 goal kind of looking back is uh, how do we continue to have this amount of engagement, but also make sure that that engagement is always of high quality or maybe slowly inching up the quality along the way. Uh, so we get to deal with our success, right? The consequences of success is we like to have even more. So um, more interactions between researchers. I know that the SourceCred Guild is looking at ways that we can incentivize or further incentivize high quality content and more strongly disincentivize um, fluff or kind of low effort uh, content. So as you get more people, there's more work to be done from like an onboarding and a culture setting type of sense. And so these are all things that we are looking forward to into the future. Um, another graph that we don't have here is just kind of moderation actions have also gone up. And in some ways, I want to say thank you to the people in this call who have been doing things like flagging posts that they don't necessarily think uh, quite meet SCRF standards. For sure. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh... Having an active community makes the presence of being in the community a much more pleasant experience. So yeah, again, thank you to everyone who spends time in our Discord and our forum, coming to these calls, uh, and generally hanging out with us in, in any capacity. Um, so yeah, definitely happy to kind of take a pause there. I think the only remaining thing is thinking uh, forward, uh, which we're already getting short on time. So happy to leave this more as an open question and just uh, kind of leave any remaining time for folks who might want to react. So Brian, please. Yeah, just really quick. Uh, we are actively doing development work on the forum. That's a discourse. And so if anybody is interested in working with me on doing integration work, so basically the idea of connecting discourse to Discord or to GitHub, basically these three properties. If, if anybody is interested in that concept, like you can reach out to me and um, we can talk about our plans and whether or not you might want to help out, et cetera. So anyway, that's all. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for shouting that out. And in general, with any of the initiatives, right, as you know, with this kind of a question of what we're hoping to get at, if there are things that you're either you know, you think we we didn't pay enough attention to from what we did, uh, you know, uh, have as part of our activities last year, or you think in general we should be doing any new things or focusing on any different areas. I mean, we always appreciate any kind of feedback from our community on how we can be improving and how else we can be driving value, uh, you know, to researchers, to the space in general, and to to the folks who constitute the space as well, because uh, you know there is what is the space but the people in it. Um, so yeah, Paul, please. 
man, kind of a, a meta way also to address this question. Right? So from a moderation side, uh, we've been working to kind of do some summary discussions and put those at the top of threads so that people can readily catch up uh, without having to read all the threads. Similarly, for all the community calls, when we get to you open questions like this or the good discussions that we have here and we inevitably run out of time on, uh, Angel does a very solid job of doing a recap post on the forum of these community calls. And so if you want to think about this question, uh, the forum is going to be a great opportunity for you to kind of lay out here's some other stuff that's on top of mind if you didn't get an opportunity to get those things here and we can kind of have that there for all time so that we can continue to make improvements on um, our forum and the scurf as a whole yeah for sure yeah thank you for uh to angel for getting those started and and getting those recaps available for folks so uh, to make it easier to catch up if uh, if you weren't here and to stay engaged with the discussion here. So yeah, we're we're getting into our final minute here, so I'm definitely happy to to hang out for the remaining time. And I see we got Cat Cam going to to help yep. uh, wave us out of the hour. Yeah, I wanted to end the year saying happy, happy New Year's and all that from Hemel, my cat. Everybody oh, knows Hemel, and uh, she wants everybody. To have a great happy new year's <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll make sure uh he now, uh see a fair gives a farewell to lucas next week as well and then convey us an official uh happy holidays uh but yeah for in case someone's not able to join next week uh yeah thank you all uh for what's been a, a, an active and interesting year uh for sure uh but has been a, a great one as being part of this community so yeah, i do appreciate it Excited to see folks who can join next week in the FTX recap community call. Uh, and otherwise, have a great rest of your Thursday, everyone.